Hi everyone. Um, so this is a video uh, part of, as part of my bachelor dissertation, and it has two purposes. One, I want to show sort of my workflow for how I create these co-occurrence networks in Giphy. You can find these co-occurrence networks on my GitHub page, which is in the description. And um, I want to show you all the steps so you can replicate it if you want. And the second purpose is that if you want to interpret the graphs, it might be useful to know how they were created and some sort of some of the reasons for the steps in the methodology. And I think just showing them will be really useful for you to better understand the graphs. Um, yeah, so let's get started here. So we have um, this uh, Gephi file in uh, Gex file in Gephi uh, with uh, around 800 nodes and around 1,000 edges. So we're just going to open it. Um, and then uh, this is the data laboratory view, but first let's have a look at the graph view. Um, so it's just in initializing here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do are just some basic things. So we want here uh, our labels. Uh, we want the labels for our nodes, and I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Uh, and also I'm going to uh, adjust this to node size. Um, and here we're going to change the node size uh, over here by using this ranking thing and then changing it by degree uh, for these values. And what this does is that uh, if a node has a higher degree, like here the word space has quite a high degree, then just the node size is larger so it's more visible. And what I like to do is here at the spline slightly increase it like this so that uh, the smaller nodes here are also more visible. Um, so let's start talking about the color bias and that's just a way of representing whether the words are related to blue, uh, sorry, fast or slow time perception and I represent, represent it with the colors red and blue and there's more about sort of the reasons for that in my methodology but um, how am I doing it? So here I go to color ranking uh, and then I've got here these two values and I'm going to start off with the correct one with this one but I'm going to explain the difference between the two in a second. So here um, I can choose one of my recents uh, and what's important about this color gradient here is that the white um, is exactly in the middle and if you click on this uh, you can sort of change the color uh, if you want different colors but it's important that the white is exactly in the center so it's uh, in a way balanced so I'm just going to apply that so that was for the nodes uh, and I'm going to do the same for the edges um, here uh, like this and um, the idea of this is that right now, uh, as I said, um, blue nodes are related to uh, short time perception and words like heart uh, are related to maybe fast time perception and they're red and that's sort of reflected in my data. And um, I, what's important is that the white nodes, which have um, a color bias of exactly zero, should be exactly white. And I just want to show that here that if you go to these filters and attributes, uh, partition, um, so this is filtering here, down here. Now we filtered only for nodes, which are exactly have a color bias of zero, and you can see that they're exactly white, which means that here in our data laboratory, um, these were nodes where there was uh, only seed words with words such as time as seed words or the fast and um, quick seed words were balanced. That's why I want these words to be exactly white. And the reason this works is that, um, I'm just going to stop filtering it here, is that uh, I've got a ceiling here on my color bias values. So I can show that here, um, that the most negative color bias value, uh, 0 0.5, uh, and the most positive is the same, which means that uh, on my color gradient here, 
all of those values which are exactly in the center of the most positive and the negative are exactly zero and therefore white and that's important so that um, if a value is basically neutral that's also visually uh, illustrated um, and uh, just to show sort of the difference if we changed let's say nodes to uh, the absolute color bias uh, and we apply that you would f see two things one um, words such as uh, heart let me just show that here um, have such a high positive color bias because there were so many phrases which were something along the lines of my heart was beating faster um, and um, because that value is so positive and the most negative value is so see the most negative value is about 122 and the most positive is 213 which means that this entire graph is skewed so that most values are blue although a lot of these values should be white indeed because they have a um, color bias of zero so the ceiling is important because it ensures that the neutral values and sort of the distribution of colors are um, start from zero and go to the most negative and to the most positive from there if that makes sense um, and i could basically just show the same thing here with the edges where if i filtered for this down here then you would only see the white edges being uh, left so they are also uh, exactly here uh, but yeah i think that's enough on color bias so now um, I'm just gonna delete this uh, here and we're gonna go to statistics um, and click here on modularity and modularity um, is an algorithm that allows you to subdivide your um, uh, nodes into modules uh, or clusters and um, um, I'm gonna just uh, Here's an image of uh, the, the paper where they developed this algorithm and sort of an image a bit of how they're doing it. I explained it a bit more on the methodology, but I also recommend this book here, um, which explains it quite well. And um, here I'm going to leave the weights on because I want um, my modules to reflect uh, how weighted some edges are. And uh, I could lower this resolution here where a lower resolution would mean that I would have more um, smaller clusters but uh, I'm just going to keep it at one and it's important if you do several of these graphs that you just keep the value here the same so it's more standardized. So I'm just going to run this um, and we can see we have 79 communities although probably as you can see here a large number of them are quite small communities so that might be islands so like two nodes uh, with an edge between them and a few of them are a bit larger so it might be like 10 or 20 larger uh, communities um, and then uh, I think the easiest way sort of to show um, the communities is using the circle pack layout uh, and that's not a basic Gephi, uh layout but I had to get that um, here in the plugins um, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to uh, choose modularity um, as a class um, and then run it and uh, just to sort of illustrate this a bit I'm just going to make this a bit smaller uh, illustrate what the modularity is doing I'm temporarily going to change the node coloring to modularity uh, and uh, just apply this uh, and uh, um, sorry one second uh, generate right and now we can use this and you can see how all of these different colors they are different um, modules uh, and in the data laboratory you can see how they belong to, for example, one module class. And here are really small ones, so shirt and sleeve uh, and stage are a really small one. Um, but some of them, like this zero one, 
which corresponds to I think this one here. Um, that's quite a, a large cluster. Um, I'm gonna just put back the this coloring. Um, and kind of what's important to know about this circle pack uh, layout algorithm is that uh, basically what it does is it creates these circles for nodes that are within the same module. Um, and so it tells us in a way a bit about the local structure. So these words here in this module might be um, related um, semantically um, or so. Uh, and, uh, but what's important is that the global structure of this graph doesn't really matter that much. And I wouldn't uh, interpret it in such a way that you would assume that, for example, here, perception and figure and whatever this cluster is about has to do something with the heart, uh, beat, and breathing cluster because um, the circle pack layout kind of arranges them quite randomly. And I just want to illustrate that. So let's say we changed the resolution here to an, a completely different value. And now we have a few more communities. Um, and then we run this again. We would find that um, the perception cluster, or this is probably the perception cluster now split in two clusters, but uh, where we still have the big perception node is now not close to the heart um, cluster anymore. So basically, the relationship on a global level between the clusters doesn't really is not really robust. Uh, and we shouldn't take it too seriously, but we still see that we have similar clusters. So for example, this big cluster zero, which we had earlier, is now a bit smaller, but we still have a lot of the same nodes, same as with the heart cluster and breathing. So uh, that kind of shows that regardless of sort of the number of communities, something about the local level is quite telling, but on the global level, the circle pack layout doesn't necessarily mean anything. Uh, but we're just going to change this back to resolution one and run it again um, and then do this. And just so the graph is a bit nicer to view, we are going to click here on expansion um, and click that three times. Um, uh, and increase the node size a bit. Uh, then what I like to do is label just so these uh, adjust a bit and you can read all the word and I'm gonna make it a bit smaller again um, and then here in the preview uh, I've got these settings here like this and this is 30 uh, and you can kind of choose them as you want uh, but now you can kind of see how the graph looks like and how you could export it as an SVG or PNG file um, and what's important here that I got the setting um, rescale weight and then from a min to a max. So for example, you might remember that, um, uh, actually no, I haven't shown this. Uh, here with heart uh, uh, in the edges, uh, the word heartbeat has a weight of 221. So it, the phrase something about heartbeat really appeared often in our data set. Uh, and then in the preview, you can see that this is um, uh, the weight here is quite large, uh, quite thick. And that basically reflects that this um, connection here between heartbeat is quite frequent. And you might see some other ones, for example, journey stretch or ego death. That's quite interesting. Um, and yeah. Uh, but I think that's it for now. Um, and if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments.